Hello again, welcome back to our WordPress client portal series. Uh, if you have missed any of these, you can look, if you're on YouTube, you can see the little playlist you should be able to on the side. If not, you can always just go to the channel or you can just type in wpclientportal.co. That should take you directly to the YouTube playlist. Um, so in today's video, I'm gonna be direct up front and we're gonna get right to work, is that we are in a situation now where there's a lot of things happening at once. So uh, make sure you use the chapters in the bottom of this video that I will make sure I will go back and I'll highlight out the pieces that uh, and talk about like what we're doing at given points in this video because to me a lot of the things are starting to intertwine we're gonna have to we're probably gonna touch on e-commerce here in this uh, and in this episode and um, just I'm gonna try to do the best I can to keep it concise and, and straightforward but um, we are gonna be bopping around a little bit so just make sure you use those chapters and let's just dive into it okay so off camera offline here what I did was I added two plugins that um, and also want to talk about this too as we talk about the e-commerce thing because if you're not using this for e-commerce I mean I, I think that's like one of the, the biggest pieces of it depending on how your, your system is uh, particularly st structured there are options for you. You could use WooCommerce. You could use Surecart. You might want to use NorthCommerce. Like, I mean, the, the options are endless. You don't even really, technically, you probably wouldn't even necessarily need to use a built-in solution. Maybe you could use just like Stripe kind of third party. But here's what I'm going to do. And this is a little bit of a selfish decision. But again, I'm building this for myself. I'm using WooCommerce and I'm using WooCommerce subscriptions. The reason I'm using that is because my goal is to port over the data from my old client portal built with Elementor into this new portal. And in order to do that, that's what I was using on the last one. It's been working for me, it's been fine. So I'm gonna try to do that same thing over here with this Bricks version of the portal and a couple, you know, a couple new things that we've been talking about in this series. If you want to see Surecart and North Commerce and all that sort of stuff, that will probably be in further iterations of uh, videos and stuff on this channel. Probably not in the portal though. I will tell you though that it's it's an e-commerce solution. It's only one leg of the you know of the the portal. There's other things going on, and a lot of the base and everything like that is probably similar. But just know that that's what we're using. So with having said that, having said that, those are two things that I added to our plugin stack here. So I do have subscriptions, um, WooCommerce subscriptions, and then I also have, uh, let's see here, da, da, da. so I added Woo subscriptions, which you can kind of take a look at, let's see if we can go, might be able to go right here, uh, WooCommerce.com, you can see Woo subscriptions, again, it's not, I mean, it's a paid thing, it's not cheap, uh, it's like $239 a year, but again, if you're charging for your service and everything like that, you build that in, um, I don't normally have a problem with uh, paying for tools, so there's that. And then the other thing that I use personally, this is another decision that I've made in my business, is I use WooCommerce Intuit Payments Gateway. And the reason that I use that, which I'll show you that too as well, this is another plugin that I bought from Woo.com. And the reason that I, do, that's $99 a year. And the thing that, the reason that I do this is because I use QuickBooks for my bookkeeping. Now your options are multiple different payment processors, right? You could use Stripe, you could use Square, you could use uh, PayPal, whatever. But the way that I like to do it, given this system, is that this payment gateway is direct, directly uh, intertwined with WooCommerce. And the, and the way in which those two like work together is if I'm using QuickBooks and I'm using this Intuit Payments Gateway, then that's like, it processes it via QuickBooks Payments. And then that, those numbers and those, uh, you know, those transactions and everything like that get directly dumped into my books rather than having to go to like a third party like Stripe or PayPal or whatever, and then come back into my accounting system. This is just something that it's almost like a little trick that I found. It's not really, it's not really a trick, but if it's like, if, if you have this option available to you, um, you know, the fees and everything like that are similar, you know, you, I mean, obviously you're paying for this platform, this uh, plugin, because it's a third party thing, but again, $99 a year, I don't think it shouldn't break the bank. And again, it's just way easier on the bookkeeping side, because the, the main thing is if you ever played around with this, the way that Stripe works is that you charge your client $100. $100 goes into Stripe. And then for easy numbers, let's say that they take $3. So that $3 stays in Stripe and then 97 of those those other $97 go into your bank account. But if you're looking at your books, let's say, unless you do some sort of integration between Stripe and QuickBooks, if you're looking at your books, then you that $3 is like gone. Like there's no there's no um, you know, uh, like there's no trace of it. And the problem with that is to me is I want to be able to know how much money I'm spending on transaction fees. And I'm pretty sure you can write that off. So like, I want to know that. 
And if I don't know that, if it doesn't show up in there, then that's an issue because I didn't make that money and I had to, and that's a cost of doing business. So I don't, I want to know that. And just you, then you could do it. You could go into Stripe and you could like download a report and then put it in the end, but I don't want to do any of that. So, um, and also you could also see if you're doing it this way, it'd be easier to something that I do. I know I'm getting a little off topic here, but we'll right back into it in a second. You could also tra uh, track how much money, how much fees per client. So if somebody pays you $100 and three of that goes to fees, all of those transactions, that $97 and that $3 go into QuickBooks. And then you could say that $3 expense was directly to, towards a client rather than um, just like a big lump sum thing. So you don't have to do any of that. You can use your payment processor of choice if you want, but we use this because it, it integrates and it's great. So uh, having said all that, those are something that that's the things that we're going to be uh, kind of implementing in the way we're going to be going about this. So uh, let's just dive into it. And I want to make a couple adjustments. And honestly, I'm going to tell you this, I'm going to start building the rest of this portal to match this old portal here as much as possible. And we can always tweak as we go. But I think it would be helpful to kind of have an idea of what we're building. Uh, like, you know, kind of this as a prototype rather than um, rather than just fly by the seat of our pants. I feel like that would be a better idea. So I'll be switching back and forth between our new one and our old one. You can see up here at all times, my.findatech is the old one and portal.findatech is the new one. So let's, uh, let's just get going here. Okay, so one thing at a time here. Let's go to our menu bar here. We've got dashboard, websites, order subscriptions. Let's go and play around with a little bit of the uh, of this whole situation here, right? So WooCommerce, everybody gets gives it a bad rap a lot of times for the way that it kind of handles a lot of different things. You have to play with it. You have to massage it a little bit because that's just kind of the way that it is. So if we go to menus, first thing I want to do is I want to try to mimic this menu. So we have dashboards, websites, orders. We want subscriptions. All right, so if we want to put subscriptions into our menu here, then I normally go, you could come down here and you could say custom endpoints, but it doesn't normally put that in there. So an easy way to do it would be to just grab the the link, the custom link, which in this case would be, uh, if you could, you could actually just go right here and go to subscriptions. And then you can grab this link and you could drop it in here. And then checks link could be subscriptions and then add to menu. Now, the reason I like to do this is because I like to show them, you could lay it out different ways, but I got a lot of questions about how to do orders, how to do order history, how to show subscriptions. The concept in my mind is orders are, you could change the name of orders and get really technical with that, but like it's WooCommerce, so it's just kind of is what it is. Orders are any time that you process the transaction. Orders, transactions, same thing. Subscriptions are actual recurring, um, it's it's like the, the parent order basically. So if they start a website care plan with you today, then that's gonna be shown up in their subscription. That's like an overarching thing. And then in orders, if they have that care plan for 10 months, there's gonna be 10 orders in there. So you need to have like, you wanna have them uh, show them two different things there because if they have an active subscription, you may want them to be able to cancel it or you may want them to just know that they have the thing. It's kind of like if you have a Netflix account, again, as I always say, it's like you you got you got uh, your your payment history is kind of your orders, right? So you got, you know maybe you paid for Netflix for the last 10 months, but you need to be able to cancel that whole subscription if you want to. So that's the concept there is for orders. So if we add and we save this menu here, come back out here, we do this, now we have dashboard, websites, orders. Orders is gonna bring us to this one. Obviously we don't have anything in here yet and we're gonna play with all that. But we have orders and we have subscriptions. Now at some point you may want to get rid of this. And I like to get rid of this because this is unnecessary if you're doing like an actual navigation elsewhere. You don't really need to have this whole thing and plus it's confusing because now you have this dashboard. WooCommerce, you know, it just is what it is. It makes it a little confusing with this sidebar here. So we're gonna get rid of the sidebar, but the first thing I wanna do is make sure that we know all of the things that we have to know, if that makes sense. If you're, I'm not gonna give you a full WooCommerce tutorial in, in this, but you you obviously need to know kind of how it works. The way WooCommerce works is once you, sub, once you uh, install it, it gives you a My Account page. Now the My Account page is kind of what you're seeing. Don't worry about the header, obviously, but this is like the page content on the My Account thing. Now, the weird thing is, 
again, it doesn't matter if they, why they decided to do it. But the my account thing is like the first page and the main thing where it, where you see all of this. Like you see your little hello and you see these different things. All of these other things are endpoints off of that page. So dashboard is the my account page, but orders is my account slash orders, right? And then subscriptions, same thing. Downloads, same thing. Edit addresses, same thing. Account details, uh, log out, and then just log out. Now, the way that I've done this in the past is that I care about orders. So I'm gonna make sure that there's an orders, the orders page we're gonna use. I don't care about dashboard. There's nothing, there's nothing here for me. We're gonna get rid of this whole sidebar and I'm not gonna care about the my account page specifically. The orders I do care about, the subscriptions I care about. The downloads, if you're doing digital products, then maybe you care about that. Like something where your your digital download products, maybe you care. In my case, I don't really care. I don't have anything specific to uh, that I that I plan on offering there. So I'm just gonna make sure that that's kind of hidden and we don't need that slash downloads endpoint. Addresses, you you're probably gonna need that because you're probably gonna be asking for addresses when they're when they're doing their payment history and things like that, or their, you know their payment methods, and then account details as well. Um, you know, that's just a nice thing that they can have there where they can put in, put in information and all that. So if I show you as an example over here, this is what we'll do here next is we have websites, orders, subscriptions. These are all the same way there. And then we have help, which is a separate thing that's outside of the, the WooCommerce stuff. And then what I've done is I've done a, a drop down for account and I have profile details, which is our edit account page. I have, um, if we can click on that, I have so you can kind of see like how this is similar and then it all makes sense once we once we kind of build it over there. And then we have billing addresses and then we have uh, payment methods. So payment methods is specific to your uh, payment processor as well. So we'll talk about that and we'll be able to play around with all that. All right, so let's add this next one here. So we have account. Account is not, it's not clickable. It's just a drop down. We'll do it like that for now. We have edit account. If I'm looking at the very bottom left hand of the screen here. We have edit account. We have... Um, edit address, and then we have payment methods. So those are the three endpoints that we want to put in those things, profile details, billing address, and uh, payment methods. Okay. So if we go back to our menu and we go to, we'll do a custom link and we will just put a pound sign in there for now. And we'll say account and we add this to the menu and we will throw it. Actually, we already had it right here. Haha, <laughs> That's funny. Um, but that is not actually what we want there. That was edit account. So we'll copy that out of there. Um, actually, yeah, we'll, copy, we'll delete that. Let's just slide this into its spot. This is our, our blank one that we had. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete this uh, pound sign just because it's not gonna be an actual link. Push this up. We'll just delete this one for now. Okay, cool. Press save. Come back over here just to check this out for a second. We have account. Again, we can't click on it, we can't do anything. What we want is profile details. That's edit account. So I'm clicking around too much here, sorry about that. And then if we do, the first thing that I like to do, like I mean, you can you can do a custom link for anything, but if, if, if it's included in the WooCommerce endpoints here, then I, and I wanna just use that. So again, like these are those endpoints that are on the side there. So account details, addresses, we're gonna need those. So I'm just gonna pop them in here. Our account details is edit account. Our addresses is edit address. So if we slide this here and we slide this here, account details, addresses, save that, come back over here. Now I have a drop down with account details, which is this page, addresses, which is this page. Let's see how that lines up. Profile details, we'll change, we'll change the names obviously, and addresses. So cool. Now there's a couple things here that I want to note and we'll, and we'll get to is one, you don't see any shipping addresses here, right? I'm 99% sure that's a setting. We're going to have to go through the WooCommerce settings and kind of bring everything up to date and your settings might be different. Again, this is, this is a template video of how you can set all this up. You're going to have to change some things based on your own business, but I never anticipate actually giving anybody any shipping addresses because I don't plan on shipping anything to them. So if you can get rid of that stuff and make this portal less cluttered, it's definitely a, a win in my book. So we'll take that out of there. The other thing is additional billing addresses. You may need this. Like this is a, um, I believe this is ta this is tackled and we'll double check here by a plugin that is like a multiple address book and um, free plugin. 
If you need it, that's a decent solution. And the reason is because maybe you have one login, like somebody, that, like one client and they have one login, but they have multiple businesses and technically they have multiple payment methods and those payment methods have multiple, like, you know, maybe like business one is in, you know, uh, you know, address one and business two is in address two. You may need that. You may not. It depends. Um, but that's just another thing that, uh, that is kind of, um, that you may, you may run into. And now the next thing is you could probably as well, you may want to consider trying to like do less information or, you know, kind of like, um, combine some of these informations. If you can, if you want to like try to put like account details and addresses, the trouble with WooCommerce is, and I'm not sure if Surecart works differently. It doesn't work on like a short code approach. It works on literally like at the edit address endpoint, it loads this piece of information. Now, again, I'm not claiming to be a WooCommerce expert, okay? But everything that I've ever found, you can't just like take this and then like put it on one page that has, you know, addresses and then profile details and all that because that would kind of be cleaner, right? It would be easier to put all that on there. Um, you could try that if you want, but this is the simplest way, just straight out of the box that I've found. Um, so let's go back over to our menus and let's just say like, we'll say, um, I don't know, profile account details is fine, but we'll, ch we'll change profile details, I guess. And then we will do down here, we'll say billing. And then I'll just say addresses with a little S there. Oops. Address. Uh, let's just do billing address. Yeah, whatever. That's fine. Okay. So then save that. Now we want payment methods in here. And what's interesting is I'm not seeing it yet. So like I said, it may be a, it may be specific. I just want to see for us all to, if we go to payment methods, does it show us anything? So no payment methods found and you can't add one because I don't think that we have our payment methods thing set up yet. However, I am going to take this and I'm going to put it on our on into our menu here. So oops, we want it there. And then this is payment methods. Can't type today. Oop, there we go. Add a menu. Cool. Save. Come back out here. Reload. Booyah, there we have. So profile details, solid. Billing address, which we have shipping. We'll get that out of there. And then payment methods. So again, we have some things to tackle there, but that's good. Now at this point, okay, I left this over here so we knew we didn't like forget anything or anything like that. At this point, we have pretty much used all of these links that we need. So there is a code snippet that we can in, it, we can inject and it will get rid of this part of this so we don't need to see it anymore because you don't really want to have this two, you know, like navigation thing going on. It's going to be really confusing. It's just unnecessary. looks gross and it's very difficult to navigate, right? So I actually had to do some learning myself right here because obviously, again, I am not a uh, bricks aficionado. I am still still early to the game here, but um, there's I mean, there's just so much power. It's unbelievable. So long story short here, bricks has a built-in WooCommerce account builder. And in the past, I've used a combination of Elementor and Jet Engine to kind of like amal you know just like like kind of frankenstein things together on this um and this is just like obnoxiously powerful and extremely straightforward and simple so i'm going to give you the high level on this and then i will make sure that this link right here if you just type in also woocommerce account builder uh for bricks this link and then also this video from uh thomas just kind of like kind of uh talking about it very very helpful very good but i'm gonna i'm gonna give you the high level here okay so here's the thing the way that it works is just like every other templating piece of, of bricks, uh, you know, for singles, archives, what have you. The way in which this works is you're going to want to go to your account page. You, you've installed WooCommerce. You're going to go to my account. You're going to edit that with bricks. When you edit that with bricks, you are going to have a page that, that looks like similar to this. I've added this my account heading in here, but it's going to have, um, you know, might have some things in here right away. Regardless of what is in here, this is the template for the My Account section. Now, the way this works, as I said earlier, is WooCommerce has that slash My Account, and then it has endpoints after that. So, you know, orders, subscriptions, downloads, what have you. Now, in our case, what you have to do is you have to create like a My Account, like the standard My Account template, and then you can create, if you wish, independent other little pieces of information to go into each one of those endpoints. 
So all that really you know breaks down to is that let's say that we wanted to build our our main account page here, right? So we just click on you know in our case we don't really it's confusing here in a way, but I'm trying to give you extra information because like you may not want to do it exactly how I do it. So if you went to just my account, if you clicked on the my account button and you got to slash my account, this is the page that you're going to be on. I added this heading in here. It's just a post title. And then you're going to have these things on the side. You're going to have this stuff in here. You click on orders. It's going to go to orders. Obviously, in this case, you're going to need to do something different because each time it's going to think it's my account. We'll get to that in a second. But my point is that you are going to need to do um, this is what you're going to have. Now, personally, there's some really interesting things that you can that I'm that I'm finding that you can do. Like for instance, like this is amazing that you can change this. I'm going to show you super high level how to make this real quick if you want to do this. But in my in my mind, if I already have a nav menu, especially with like similar things on it, I don't want to have another nav menu. However, if you wanted to do that, here's how you do it. Okay, so you have this is your my account page. You're editing it directly. You section, you you container, you can have a heading in there if you want or whatever. There's this notice thing that I think is going to come up in a little bit because if you if you play with any of the things in here, if you if you change like any addresses or whatever, I think you're going to need a success notice. I saw that in uh, Thomas's breakdown, so I just threw that in there for now. We're not going to worry about it this second. But what you do is there's an element. It's called account page. You drop it in, and now you have what you would expect to see on the main dashboard page. Couple ways that you can do this. Very simply, from the UI here over on the left hand side, you change the direction. So these are at the top now. You give it maybe some gap or something like that. You come in here and you go to direction of the navigation now. And now the navigation's across the top. Pretty cool. Again, in our case, probably not going to use it, but pretty cool. And then, I mean, you could change like other things. You can give it some gaps in the middle or whatever. You can space it out, whatever you want. And then I'm just trying again, I'm just trying to get you an idea because in my mind, I don't really want to do this, but I'm going to show you what it is. So now look how this transforms. Very cool. Honestly, incredible. If I wanted to do that, that's amazing. That, that was that, that was done that easily because in a lot of other builders, you can't really do it like that. And then if you continue, you go to orders, you go to subscriptions. It works the same because you 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 edited that main my account template and that my account page. It's just it's just the page, but it's kind of, you know, uh, because it's kind of, I don't want to say the parent of those endpoints, but because it's that's because of the way that WooCommerce is structured, that's how it works. And then if you wanted to, you could change individually, like what's shown on dashboard down here, which I will show you because I'm going to have to do that, and orders, subscriptions, and all that sort of stuff. And just so you, just so you can kind of get a feel for it, let's go to orders real quick. So now we have, we are in the My Account thing, so this, this extra container part is being pulled from the My Account. And then down here, this is being pulled from our orders template. We don't have an orders template, so what do we do? Well, we go to bricks, and we go to templates, and then we come over here and we say add new, just like as we would any other time. We come over here, select template type, and look at all of these different things that bricks gives you. Dashboard, orders, view order, all this stuff. Now, the one thing I'm actually not seeing, and I'm a little slightly concerned now that I'm thinking about it, is I don't see one for, sub for subscriptions, so that's going to be a little annoying, but we'll put that aside for right now orders and we'll just call this orders um we'll, we'll say like woo orders i can always kind of change this or whatever but woo orders and then we'll say publish and we'll say edit with bricks now i want to show you what this does because this is actually really really intriguing um if you come down here and you go to like add a section look at that immediately it pulls in don't worry about this because that's like the product the thing but like that element this element and then all of this is from because it knows that it's from the, the my account thing because it's woo, right? So if we're looking at this, let's show you how this works. If we refresh this now, your selected template is empty because we created that template and it went from whatever the standard stuff is to, to this now, right? And that was just the standard unstyled, well, very little styled orders thing, right? Now over here, we could put whatever we want in here. I mean, we could put random text in here. We could say like, you know, I don't know, like, these are your orders. I don't know, whatever. Um, we could do that. We could we could come in here. There is a specific, and I'll reference this again. If we scroll down here, there are specific, like this is the, the template type, right? Dashboard orders, whatever. This is the endpoint that goes along with them. And then these are the the elements. So in our case, we're gonna, because we're dealing with the orders one, and we do want the orders information on there. We just might want to style it a little differently. We want account orders. So if we come on here um, and then we come down to, actually we're in the right one. Mm, do, 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 do. Let me find the right one, there we go. Okay, so if we come back into orders, then we're gonna wanna go over here and we're gonna say orders, account orders. And we drop that in. Of course, it doesn't put it in the right spot though, okay. 
Actually, none of this went in the right spot. Uh, duh, 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 duh. There we go. Okay. And duh, 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 duh. actually, let me see. Let me slide that in there like that. Okay, I think we're right there. Okay, so now though we have like the orders and we have the uh, the text in there or whatever. And if we can, we could actually even slide this above that. It's just so annoying sometimes with this selector thing. Just get in there where it needs to go. Okay. So let's see what we got here now. If we go out here and we refresh this, now we have these are your orders and no orders. Have been made. Now again, it's bad because we don't have any actual orders in there. I could put some dummy data in there, but you can style this whole thing, right? You could style this right here. You could style the table a little bit more. Again, just for, for lack of a thing. Look at this table. Look how different this table is and how cool that is. You can't, I mean, like you'd have to do that with custom CSS or something like that. I don't know at this point if Elementor has that built in, but um, I was using Jet Engine at that point to uh, to do that Jet Woo Builder, which is a good tool. But if you can build, do it in your page builder rather than use like a supplement or anything, it's definitely better. So again, long story short is you can do a lot of different stuff with the WooCommerce and um, like account builder of the WooCommerce account builder of uh, Bricks. But again, in my point, in my case, I don't really want this. Like I don't want this navigation here. I really just want what ultimately I want is something like I have over here. So if we go back to it, there's a lot of different stuff going on here. Okay. If we go back to it here, we have like account, we have profile details, and then this would be just the, basically that main piece, right? So our, this would be our edit account and the way I'm just showing you the old one so we can show how to build it. So edit account, right? And then we're going to have, so this would be, this would be edit account. So we're going to grab our edit account widget for our template of our edit account. We're going to plop that in there and then there, we may have to do an extra step to get this to say this because the trouble is that it doesn't necessarily know as you're, as you're seeing when we're navigating between like orders and all that sort of stuff, we could do it. We actually, because of the way that this works, we're, we could actually do it. Um, just, we, it doesn't need to be dynamic. We could just do it, uh, straight up, um, uh, kind of statically, but if we were, if the way in order and the way I had to do this dynamically in the past was I had to like actually change the titles of each page of each based on each endpoint. You, you could do that, but you don't really have to. Let me try to explain to you what the hell I'm talking about. So here's what we're going to do. So the first thing we're going to do is we're not going to worry about this right now. Cause I will get something to get rid of this. The one thing that's like kind of annoying to me that I don't hundred percent know is if you go to account page here and you have this all set up, it would be really nice to me if there was just a way to say like display none on the navigation portion. Um, and I'm not exactly sure if that's, if that's an option. I mean, I guess maybe you could just come in here and just, you know, write, write the CSS and just display none. But for the time being, it, it'll help us kind of navigate too. So we won't worry about that. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get rid of this for now. I'm going to get rid of this heading because that's not entirely necessary because we're probably not even going to be on the my account page. What's actually probably going to happen is we're going to be on like the orders page, for instance, right? So we're going to refresh the orders and then we're going to come down here and we're going to delete this. So we have our account orders. So that's what we want. We want to have our account orders there. Ideally this, this wouldn't be up here and in our account orders, um, in our orders template, we are going to have like a heading. We would have a heading. Now, in in some case, you might be able to say like post title here, but I don't think that's gonna work for us because I don't think it's gonna be able to pull in the actual page title of that. See, see how it's saying account? This isn't this isn't like 100% ideal, but if you're gonna be styling each one of these endpoints specifically, I mean, in this case, the thing that it affords you and the thing that you could do is you could just come in here and you could just say orders. And now you can now you can come back out and you can go like this. And now this is gonna say orders. Obviously this won't be here when we're done. And then bing, bang, boom, there we go. Um, let me go back to this and let me change this to, technically should probably be an H1, do that. And then boom. Okay, so I'm gonna get out of that for now. I'm gonna come back over here. We have orders, this is orders. Now we're gonna to go to subscriptions. Now again, I'm concerned about the subscriptions because I did not see a template for that. Um, we don't really need downloads and then addresses. Let's do addresses real quick. So the same, the same concept applies. So if we go to, uh, my templates, we say, we'll say woo addresses 
um, as an example, we'll come down here and we will do addresses, we'll publish, edit with bricks. I did see one thing that I'm not 100% sure if I need to do or not. So I added this section in here and I'm not sure if I actually need to add the section or not because I did see the way that Thomas did it. He didn't add that. So let me see if I could, let me see just what happens just for funsies. In his video, he's not adding a, you can see here in his structure panel, there's no section in there. He's just adding the, he's just adding the thing. Now, I didn't do this that way on the other, on the other one we did here. So let me see if, uh, da, 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 da. see it's, it's already there. Like I'm not sure if it's actually necessary. So let's do addresses and addresses. Yeah, you see, I don't, I don't think you actually need those other things. I think this is actually all you really, all you really want there. So we have billing and and that there. We go like this, and then we come back over here, and now we have the following addresses. Now we may have to add some of that back in because I guess maybe this is just pulling in. We'll see. Yeah. So I mean, again, it, I really like the idea of like actually being able to build out the WooCommerce thing rather than just doing the standard stuff because it's just there's a lot more weirdness that you you know, have to, that you, that you don't have to deal with. Um, you can just kind of show it as much as you want, which honestly, like, like you don't need, like I said, obviously, like we've been talking about with this heading thing, this nav, we, we don't need that. So I really like it. I actually really, really, really like this, uh, this builder here. Um, let's see what else we have here. Account details. How do we normally show this over here? We have profile details and we just have it like that. Cool. All right. Let me actually go back here for a second. Cause we need to do our, uh, heading and we'll drop our heading right in here and now there's no spacing or anything like that in here because there's no container and stuff like that again I'm not 100% sure if we need or don't need that over here I think if we had a container and a, a section and a, and a container over here I think that might might do some weird stuff to the um, the structure of the actual page uh, so may want to double check on that but let me see addresses oops addresses that's fine something like that just for now again we're not we're not trying to be perfect here we're trying to get some structure in place and if we go back here we would actually go over here so i mean everything is working as we would expect it to work that's like the main that's the main point um and hopefully you learned something here with this whole account builder or the uh you know the woocommerce account builder because i know i definitely did and that's pretty dope that we can do it like that. Let us do just one more, I want to say, because we're going to need another template. So we have our orders. We, we played with the my account page. We did the orders. We did um, the addresses and then edit address and edit account. So those are gonna be different pages. Uh, let's do edit account though. Oh, I didn't give it a title. Okay, oops. Uh, let's say woo edit account. Just because I wanna keep it, there we go. And then edit this. So edit account. We're not gonna, we're gonna leave that out of there. We're gonna say, oops, oops. Uh, edit account. There we go. Booyah. Okay. So again, there's that. And again, I'm putting these headings in here. There might be a better way to do this, but I, I would want this to be more of like a dynamic approach. But I mean, because of the way this is set up and built, you don't really need to do that. You could just say like edit account. You can just type that in because it's cool that it gives you the freedom to, to kind of do whatever you want here. Like I'm literally styling every single one exactly how I want because they're individual little templates. So yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know. You'd say edit account or I don't know, account details. Also, it's kind of just confusing to me why they, why like, why is, why is this called account details but the endpoint is edit, I don't know, whatever. Weird WooCommerce stuff. Uh, and then if we refresh this, so again, uh, styling wise, not incredible, but I really love that I didn't have to go. I'm I'll actually show you what I mean somewhere in here. Actually, I think it was a, uh, da, 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 right here. So these are all code snippets from the other, the other portal and like my account pages here. So we had to change, you know, if the endpoint is edit address, we changed it to this. So I was like creating like a template and I couldn't do it like this. So I was trying to do it, um, where 
if the endpoint is this, then change the title of the actual page to orders. And it's a cool solution. If you need to do that, like I would, I would suggest you look this up and just, and kind of do it or just copy it off the screen here. But the point is that like, that is what was happening here is like I was taking the endpoint and then I was saying like, okay, this is the title of that endpoint because it's not, it doesn't know that it's a page. It's really just more of like, again, the endpoint thing. And it's kind of interesting and it did work in the past, but in this case, it's not necessary because I can access it and I can do whatever I want to it. And ultimately this is going to be gone. So if we go to our dashboard, we're not going to, the, the trouble is like, if you would go to this page, what do you want to see? You don't want to see nothing. So that that'll be one concern, but then orders will just show it orders, subscriptions, still concerned about that. Not exactly sure what's going to happen there. Downloads. Um, we're just probably not going to have that active or it's not going to, it's not going to work or whatever addresses. Um, you know, same thing. It'll just be like this. Account details, same thing, and log out, you know, kind of same same thing there. I want to show you something, and I think it'd be kind of pertinent and important to go over some of the uh, some of the settings, you know, just kind of on the back end here and explain this to you. And one of the things that I just thought of and came across is if we don't need, we need orders, we need subscriptions. If we don't need downloads, um, there's a way to make it so when you click downloads, it's just that page is gone. Now, we're not, that's not actually going to happen. Uh, because we're going to make it so they don't see this and they can't click downloads. But if for some reason they got to that, um, we can always do like a redirect thing as well. But the very simple way to do that, if you're not familiar with this in WooCommerce, is if you go to WooCommerce and settings, and then you go to advance, if we come down here to the bottom, there's all these account endpoints. So we need orders. We need view orders. We need uh, subscriptions, view subscriptions. We need the payment method. We don't. If we don't need downloads, we can just take downloads out. Similarly with lost password and customer login, we may not need that because of the way that we set everything up with with WS form. So if we don't need that, we could just boop and boop. Now we may need customer logout depending on which, again, which ones we're using on the front end. But again, if you don't need the endpoints, then you can just get rid of them and then they're not accessible and they're not there. And it's it's perfectly you know, fine as long as you have another way for them to do it, or if they don't need it, then it's, it's, it's a moot point anyway. So after doing that, another little Easter egg is the fact that if you now go back to your account, your My Account page, you can see that dashboard, order, subscriptions, addresses, and account details are the only ones that are here. So what does that mean? That means that like there was logout here and there was downloads, and because they don't have endpoints, WooCommerce is actually smart enough to not even put them on this list anymore, which is kind of cool because if you if you don't need those and you still want this little thing here and you style this differently and all that and, and all that jazz, like you can, it, it's kind of nice. You, they just they can't click on it at all because it's not even there. What we're gonna try to do here is we're going to try to go to account next, back to the account page. We're just editing my account page, just like the standard. Um, if we just go here. For instance, so we're editing the actual page here, right? And then what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to get rid of this uh, this nav bar up here because I'm going to have everything that I need up in the one navigation. And if we go to our page here, and we could probably do it a couple different ways, but I think this this template is all of you know the whole page, the entire page there. So if we just go and we expand all these different things and we click on account page here, again, I really feel like there should just be a, an option to just display none, the navigation portion of this. But um, actually there may be display, but this isn't gonna, yeah, it's the whole thing. I, it would be really nice if we could just display none like that specific thing. But um, regardless, let's try this option. So I took this class from the, uh, I just inspected and just found this class specifically on that. Uh, and I'll say display none. And look at that, maybe that'll work. I feel like that's at least good enough for us, what we're trying to do here. It would be nice if there was like a more uh, direct way to handle that, but uh, you know, like in the UI, but that's totally fine. And then that, 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 that gives us what we want. So that's exactly, in my opinion, what you kind of want there. So now you have all these other things and obviously we can deal with styling and everything, but you have, you can take those endpoints, you can put them in your own navigation, and then now you don't have the whole secondary navigation thing and all that, but you do still have full control over all the styling of all those different endpoints based off of that one template. Uh, you know, the, you can do the whole container with the My Account page, and then you can edit every single one of them 
as uh, as their own as their own little template. So I'm pretty psyched about this. I am just a little annoyed by the subscription situation, and I'm a little annoyed by the payment method situation. Uh, but we will figure those out, and we will rectify those in some way, shape, or form. Okay, so I've been scouring the internet here off camera for the last. Obviously, it was like a quick jump for you, but I've been looking at how to how we can kind of wrap put a bow on this just for now and obviously we'll end up coming back from it but I'm it's not it's not sitting well with me that I can't edit the subscriptions template and I'm pretty sure that's a limitation of bricks right now and I can't edit the payment methods template at minimum I want them to have the at, at the very minimum they need to have a title on them and as you can see what now what I've been playing around with is what we did before is we added titles to each one of those and we did them manually. So we went to profile details, we added this little account details in there. That's statically in there. It's in the template of the account details. It's fine, but it breaks down when we can't edit the templates of these other ones. And this is what I was talking about earlier when I was talking about the JetWoo Builder and the, the, the uh, code snippet that I put in the old website is that the trouble is when you have your account, when you go to my account page and you put in the post title, right? This is a heading and it's pulling in from the post title. Every single one of these endpoints, for some reason, maybe there's like a different thing that I could put in there perhaps, but every single one of them, it the post title is my account, even though it's my account slash like endpoint. Now the one place that I know to look, and if you've never been to this page, you should absolutely come to this page because if you don't know about this, this stuff about bricks, it's just incredible, is the dynamic data article that they have. And there's all these different like post fields and everything like that, but there's like crazy weird stuff that they decided to put in here, like post date, human time difference. I mean, it's wild. Now, what I would love is like post title, but like the current endpoint and, you know, like URL is, I guess, kind of close, but I'm just from the looks of it and everything, I'm not seeing a way to actually get the current, the current actual like name of the endpoint and of the page because I don't really think it is a page. Maybe there's a way to just like get it through this like, you know, this this echo situation if we did like a, a custom function type thing. I'm still not just not I'm not hundred percent sure of uh of how to kind of make that happen. So what I'm gonna show you is what I think will work is we're gonna change the titles. We're gonna manually like change the titles of all these pages. So when we go to orders, for instance, inst obviously this was, like I said, static, but this will change to orders. If we do our job right, this will change to orders. If we do our job right, this subscriptions, we couldn't template it, this will change the subscription. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back over to the other uh, build that we had, because like I said, I did have to do it over there. I didn't think I would have to do it here. Um, but that's okay. So what I'm not going to do anymore is I'm not going to use snippet plugins just because I don't think that's the safest thing to do. I'm going to copy this though. And this is that whole snippet we'll talk about in a second. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to our theme editor and this is the style sheet. Let's go to theme functions. We've got some stuff in here. Okay, let's do, let's just come down here and let's go like this. And let's try that and let's press update file. Hopefully nothing breaks. Always scary playing around with this. And then let's come back over to here. And that didn't work, terrific. All right, I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys. I've been looking at this for way too long at this point off camera. So we're just gonna push this, kick this can down the, down the road for a little bit, quick, thought process for you. Maybe you know exactly what to do. Um, hopefully if you do put it in the comments, but I'll eventually figure it out. I'm sure quick high level though. I used, I did this with, uh, Elementor worked perfectly. And the code, as you can see from, uh, this, this, uh, resource here, not the original resource that I saw, but really comprehensive one here, wpbeaches.com. This section of it right here is you're using the title filter and the in the loop conditional to kind of go through and, and look at all this. And you're basically saying like, if the endpoint is downloads, for instance, and it's in the loop, then change the title of that to, to download MP3s. Well, I mean, we have that code. I downloaded uh, code snippets just to make sure I wouldn't, I wouldn't keep it in here probably, but just to kind of, uh, you know, kind of set the exact same thing up as the other one. And 
I don't know. I don't know what it is specifically about bricks. I'm not blaming bricks. I'm just saying there's probably some sort of weirdness going on since I did this over in Elementor. Uh, I have all these things here where it's like uh, the way that I'm understanding this is if it's on edit account, then change the title thing to profile details. And title over in the in the Elementor world here was page title, and that's that's how it worked. Like I would go from page to page, and that and that would work. In bricks, it's post title, which I don't actually think is is different but for some reason it seems like it's kind of behaving different uh and i'm not exactly sure what exactly is going on i even tried though as you can see with this if you're if you're keen to this i even tried the echo situation where you can just if you go to dynamic data here you can echo like a custom function so i even tried to like create that custom function in here which like I tried to, I tried to, so we got this, right? So this is our, this would be like our, our function, right? So we save our changes just to make sure. And then we come over here to this and then this is our function, right? And we save this and now like we would go to orders and it's not working because this is the orders that we statically put in there, but there, there's, there's nothing above it. it. It just, it just renders as blank. So I have no idea what's going on. I'm sure it's a simple thing because this doesn't seem like rocket science, but this is one of those things though that I will say that I think WooCommerce just makes it for some reason difficult to do this type of shit. I also found this generate press icon or um, help one that uh, is similar, but I didn't try it. I'm sure there's a way to do it. Last thing is I was also in the bricks forum here and I saw two things. I don't think I said either of these on camera here. I went to WooCommerce and I found like WooCommerce subscription templates for my account page. Apparently this is not something that is possible. So I definitely, you know, thought that this should, this should be something we should do here. Uh, so hopefully that happens and the payment methods one, cause I didn't, I didn't say anything about that yet. And then the WooCommerce um, pages, somebody said this and their, their idea is actually kind of cool. My account and then dash like orders or whatever, regardless, like it seems like there's no way that you can actually get it. And I said, I used that code snippet that I showed you, but now I'm having trouble with bricks. So honestly, I have literally no idea what's going on. Mark from the future here, uh, a couple hours after I filmed that last clip that you just saw, uh, we got a response on the, uh, specifically about this, the account, you know, um, like kind of on the WooCommerce account pages, having the uh, the endpoint names in there and a quick do, quick way to do that. Uh, I don't know why that other, I still don't know why that other code snippet didn't work that I had before, but regardless, doesn't matter. Um, our, our guy, I, I've seen uh, Sridhar over at Bricks Labs all over, all over the communities. If you're not following Bricks Labs, if you're not following him, like go check him out. If you're not in the Bricks community already, you have to. So much content and so much value in this Bricks Labs website, it's crazy. Uh, but um, he posted a link and uh, it was a very simple code snippet here that I copied and I've edited a little bit, so I'll show you. But the concept here is the person that originally made that, this uh, this thing in here, Abby here, uh, wanted a different thing, wanted like my account dash orders, which is a great idea that I don't have specifically set up like that. And I obviously this code snippet is for that, um, but the concept is exactly the same. So regardless of if you wanna do it like that, where it's my account slash order dash orders, or if you just wanna do like dash orders, uh, whatever you wanna do there, you can do it however you want. But if you wanna do it like this, then it's post title and then echo uh, this. So we were kind of on the right track with the echo, but um, if you copy this code snippet here, and I will have a link to this exact page in the description of this video, but let me kind of show you what I'm doing here, uh, the way that I currently have it. I took that code snippet, I dropped it into my functions PHP. Uh, I, uh, I've amended it a little bit, uh, and I've gone to, what I've done is just, I did return my account for the else here. If you look through it, it's like, you know, it pulls in the string for the endpoint. It says, if WooCommerce endpoint URL is orders, then use orders for the for the, you know, the output of that function. And then else if, if it's payment, I put in payment methods for payment methods and then downloads, edit address, da, 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 whatever. And you can change all these at your leisure. So let me give you a quick example. The last other thing that I did here was else return my account. What this ultimately gives you is that if we look at the, our builder here, what I did was this is our my account page. That is what we're editing. And you can see our structure over here. We have a section container heading we have that notice and we have the account page so what we're not doing now just so to, to recap everything before okay we are not adding the headings at the template level we're just adding it on the my account page and letting it do it so if we edit our orders template or our 
downloads template or our subscriptions template if they ever make one of those. Like we're not putting a heading there. We're just putting the heading on the My Account page and it's automatically doing it depending on what the endpoint is, just so you understand that. For the heading piece here, uh, what we've done is we have a heading and we have echo uh, bl get endpoint name. That's just the name of the function. Uh, and then what we have is if it's on the My Account page, because I put this piece down here, else my account, it's gonna have the my account thing on there. It's gonna show my account, right? Because there's no endpoint on there, so that's the way that I did it. You could do it different ways too, but that's the way that I did it there. You could also just like probably just say, instead of that, you could say uh, post title because it'll work on the my account page, but obviously on the other ones it won't. Again, understand this code if you use this. The way that this is written here, there's little dash orders, and that's because the request here specifically was my account, which would be the post title, and then this uh, output would be based on the endpoint and it's dash whatever. I didn't want to do that. I just got rid of all the dashes, okay? Um, as we can see here, I got rid of all these dashes in here and just put the title, okay? So what that, what that ultimately does, again, a little different, but the way that I wanted it to be was my account, cool, okay. And then if we go to, uh, you know, if we click on orders, now it just shows up as orders. If we go to subscriptions, it's not gonna show up as subscriptions because it didn't write subscriptions. I'll show you that right now. If we wanted to do that, we go like this. We just copy one of these. And again, the order and everything like that isn't super important, but we do else if, and we say subscription. So let's say you wanted to do this. If you have this endpoint here, you make sure that the endpoint is the same. Did I write that? Subscriptions, yes. And then we're gonna go down here subscriptions, boom. So if the endpoint is subscriptions, return subscriptions. And then we're gonna say, save that, and then come in here. We're on subscriptions, reload, subscriptions. There we go, so that's how it works. So we're just kind of like figuring out what the endpoint is, we're getting the endpoint, and then we're saying, boom, whatever you wanna put there, cool. So I'm loving that. Um, and then addresses. Uh, same thing for edit address and and then payment methods uh, Same thing there. I, I had payment methods listed in there so I could do it like that So we got that that pretty much solves our situation with that. So that's awesome. Super happy super thankful uh, for the uh, for Brick slabs and all that the one thing I will say is that I put another I think I, I might have talked about this in the video I can't remember I apologize, but regardless the other thing about the payment methods and subscriptions I know I spoke about this a couple times. There's still no thing for this like there's no there's no template type for subscriptions for payment methods payment methods you might not actually need but there's none for subscriptions and there's none for um like memberships as well which we don't have on this website necessarily but i thought about that and there's none for that so it'd be very very nice if we ask bricks very nicely i did put a post in the idea board on bricks.com or brick bricksbuilder.io that said can we get a template type for subscriptions like WooCommerce account subscriptions, that would be fantastic. I don't think we have that yet, so I don't think I'm gonna be able to really do much here. Maybe, I, I mean, I probably can, but not easily. So um, yeah, but I just wanted to tell you guys that because I didn't wanna leave you guys hanging there. Look at the link in the description if you want the full documentation here. Um, definitely go follow Bricks Labs, fantastic. Um, Sridhar, thank you so much for that. And um, yeah, I'm super excited that we got that taken care of. All right, so with all that being said though, I'm gonna end this video here. Thank you guys so much. Make sure you like the video, subscribe and everything like that. If you wanna see more comments, subscribe to my newsletter too. Uh, I'll update you guys as soon as more videos come out and everything like that. Links in the description for all those things. Um, but yeah, looking forward to talking to you in the next one. Let's keep going.